And this is very closely related to the games you'll be designing. Hopefully your games are a little bit more exciting than just having a table and a hat. But um, we are going to assume that your friend assures you that you can win some money with the following game. It costs you $5 to play. We won't be playing with real money, we'll be playing with chips. You are going to pick a number out of a hat from 1 to 4. And win the amount shown in the table depending on which comes up. Is it worth to play? So here's the number, here's the winning. What is missing from this table that you like to put in? The probability of getting, picking one through four. So the probability of the number. Since it's a hat and the numbers are just mixed in there, what's the probability of picking the one? One out of four. And the two? One out of four. And the three? One out of four. And the four? One out of four. All right, good. So from our initial definition on the first page, what we want to do is find the product of the probability and its expected, uh, what do you call it, expected outcome, expected value, payout, expected payout. payout. And we have one time where we win one quarter, sorry, one quarter of the time where we win one, and the sum, so we're adding, one quarter of the time we will win two, one quarter of the time we will win five, and one quarter of the time we will win eight. Now, if we work this out, it's going to look like we're winning some money. What have we forgotten? You have to pay five euros to play. Okay. One quarter times one I know is 0.25. One quarter times two I know is 0.5. But now it's a little bit trickier. So 0.25 times five plus 0.25 times eight. And that gives me four. So I can expect to win each time I play this game. I can expect to get four back. But as Mr. Song pointed out, it cost me five to play. So therefore, each round, it is definitely not worth it to play. And your games that you are designing are going to be such that, like a casino game, and you will want the same result. You'll want the game to be fun and not obvious to the player that it's going to be a losing game. But at the same time, you want to make sure that you are the one that has a net profit at the end of the long run. Good. Does that make sense? Any, I missed anything there? Anything you would have done differently on that last one? No, it looks great. Um, yeah, I think w losing a euro every every time you play, it's such a big loss that, that I'm not going to play that game. So on your project, maybe you want to make it closer. Yeah, one out of five, 20% loss each time. Yeah, well, most casino games are running up around 95% payouts, right. aren't they? Mm -hmm. But Okay. And let me just double check to make sure, but I'm pretty sure that's the last slide. Oh no, we got one more. Oh. Good. Let's see. Good. All right, number five. Multiple choice paper. We don't do a lot of these. No. In a multiple choice paper, each question is followed by four alternative answers. The candidate is asked to circle one of these answers. If the answer circled is correct, then the candidate gains three marks. But if the answer is incorrect, the candidate loses one mark. Determine the expected value of the mark gained per question by the candidate if the candidate chooses an answer at random. Okay. Oh, just need the pen, sorry, I unclicked it. All right, so... Um, so one quarter every question. of the time. Okay, so you get three marks one quarter of the time, but you lose a mark the rest of the time. Three quarters of the time. So the complement of one out of four is three out of four? Yeah, three times one-fourth plus negative one times three-fourths. So the expected value of this test score for a candidate that knows nothing and just treats it like a monkey is zero. Hmm. Okay. Part II, the candidate knows that one of the answer is incorrect, one of the incorrect answer is incorrect and chooses at random from the remaining three possibilities. Okay, so that changes the Probability, let me use green. So you still get three marks for the correct answer, right? But it's like you had only three choices. Mm -hmm. So out of one third. And here you still lose a mark, 
but you know one of them is incorrect, so you're not going to pick that one. Like so. So the expected value is 3 times 1 third plus negative 1 times 2 thirds, and that's 1 minus 2 thirds, so that would be 1 third. Good. So by knowing at least one is incorrect, even if you don't know the correct answer, you can be smarter than a monkey on the long term and outperform them on this test. Now, I don't know if you've heard this story or not. Somebody told me it at a conference, and uh, I haven't been able to verify it directly, but they told me about the World War I and how they chose pilots to fight in, um, for Britain. And they gave them a multiple choice test, and everybody that scored above a certain grade was smart enough to be a pilot, but what they also did was they took all the candidates that answered really, really, really low because they knew the right answers and were picking them incorrectly. And I always thought that was a fascinating use of a test like this to figure out who was um, smart enough to do it. So they were smart enough to choose the wrong answers on purpose, but it ended up that they caught those people I anyway. See. Fascinating story. I've, like I said, I've never heard it verified or read the, the literature of it verified, but I've been assured that it's true by a few people at a conference I was on. Interesting. Very interesting. So.